Blessings, blessings, everyone. Welcome to our Monday Night Spiritual Live. My name is Pastor Catherine, and this is Pastor is Brother Danny. We're from Chapel of Change, Dallas. We want to come on here every Monday night and bring a fresh hope, a fresh word of hope to you. So give me one moment. I'm just updating something real quick and we'll get started. All right, let's see. Let me see here. There it is. Give me one moment. All right. All righty. And we're ready to go. So I hope everybody has have a, had a blessed day today. I hope everybody had a blessed resurrection weekend. And uh, so this evening, I want to come into a time of just bringing a, a, a short word before we pray. And I want to go into Philipp Philippians 3.10. And it tells us, and this, so that I may know him experientially becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him, understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely. And in that same way, experience the power of his resurrection, which overflows and is active in believers even now. And that I may share the fellowship of his sufferings by being continually conformed inwardly into his likeness to even to his death dying as he did so see this verse is telling us that there's a price to pay for the anointing the anointing is not free there's a price everyone must pay for the anointing and we can see here that apostle paul was paying the price that's why he said, I want to know him. It's not just a plea from his heart. It's, I want to know him. I want to know what it was to be in his shoes in that time of suffering. I want to experience it as he did. Because what else does he say? It's, he said that to die is to live in Christ. To live is to die. And we know Apostle Paul was in ministry for years, even before he wrote these letters to the Philippines, to the Philippians. But he still wanted to go deeper. He felt he couldn't go deep enough because God, Jesus, he is so vast, so, so expansive. We can never know everything about him. And he wants to go deeper. And so, but, but let me tell you, let me tell you, the deeper we go in intimacy with God, we no longer chase atmospheres. We no longer have to chase that atmosphere of peace, that atmosphere of worship. When we go deeper in our intimacy with God, we become the atmosphere. We become the atmosphere carrier. And my pastor, he says that we are not thermostat, we are not thermometers to reflect the atmosphere. We are thermostats to create the atmosphere. So wherever we go, we are carrying that atmosphere of peace, that atmosphere of God's glory. And wherever we step into, we bring the atmosphere in with us. See, when we die to self, there will be such a peace around us. There will be a calmness that will be in us and will flow and come through us. And we will carry an atmosphere of reverence wherever we go. And that reverence, that is, the, that is what uh, the Bible means when it says to fear God. It means to reverence God in all that we do. But let me say this again. And I cannot say this enough. I cannot press this enough. There is a price that comes with the anointing. There is a price to pay for the anointing. There is a price to pay for the anointing. You see, Apostle Paul was coming to a place where he wanted to share in the fellowship of Christ's suffering. And that is speaking of something painful, of being attacked even of dying to oneself. And when we go through those tough seasons, they shape us through dying to self. And at this level, 
we become the atmosphere. We begin to carry the atmosphere everywhere we go. We no longer chase signs and wonders. The signs will follow you. When you become the atmosphere carrier, the signs and wonders will follow you. But it comes with a price. But you see, it's this power that's continuously working in us. And let me tell you, for every new level of breaking, there is a new level of resurrection power. This is the recipe. The recipe is time and breaking, breaking the old and allowing the new to come into our lives through time. And this, this brothers and sisters, this is why we need to be in our word. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. When you know the truth of God's word, when you know the truth of what he has proclaimed you are, of who he has said you are, it will set you free to walk in your calling, to walk in your purpose, to walk with the confidence to know that no demon in hell, no devil on this earth will stop you from fulfilling what the Lord has called you to do. Because not only do you have God on your side, but you have a host of angels fighting around you when you walk in your calling and as you continue, as you continue. See, if we're not in our word, if we're not conforming our mind to the word, if we're not transforming our mind daily and renewing it daily by the reading of his word, then we will easily fall for the deception of the enemy. We will easily fall for his tricks, his schemes, for all that he has. See, Apostle Paul was willing to pay that price. I want us to ask ourselves this evening, are we willing, are we willing to, to pay that price, to surrender everything and become that atmosphere carrier? Are we willing to give up all our worldly possessions and say, Lord, use me as you see fit? I want to be what brings your atmosphere, what brings your spirit, what brings your glory into the now, into my life and those around me today. Because when we do that, the power of the, of the resurrection will begin to not only work in us, it will begin to manifest around us because we know that it must first work in us before it breaks out around us. So this evening, as we, if, as, as we consider our, if we're willing to surrender everything, if we're willing to come to a place where we're willing to give him everything and say as Apostle Paul said and say that I am willing to, to share in the fellowship of his suffering even to his death. Let us come to this point. Let us come to this place and be with him this evening and be one in accord and say, yes, I am. I am willing to do more than what needs to be done to not only glorify my Lord, but to share and to experience what my Jesus went through. So, Father God, as we come before you this evening, we thank you in all things, Father God. We praise you for all that you've done. We thank you, Father, that this, this past uh, weekend, this yesterday, Father God, our Savior was rose from the grave. He was raised, Father God, in all glory, Father, in all honor, Father, and that today he is standing at the right hand of your throne, Father God, in that place of honor and glory where that where he was prophesied to stand, Father God. We praise you this evening that you would continue to guide us, Father, in all things, Father. We praise you, Father, that no matter where we are, Father God, you have already seen everything that we have done. You already know what we're about to do, Father God. And your word even tells us that when we have something, Father, that we have a burning in our spirit to bring it before you. And you say that show us the steps to take. You will order our steps. You will 
bring it to pass, Father God, when we lay it at your feet, Father God. So this evening, Father God, we come before you. We lay all at your feet. We lay all and surrender all to you, Father God. This evening, we are proclaiming, Father, send us, use us, Father God. We are proclaiming, Father, help us, let us experience, Father. Let us experience, Father God, our Lord Jesus in a new way, in a new level, Father. That we may, as Apostle Paul said, have the experience and share in his, in the fellowship of his suffering. That we may know, Father God. That we may know, Father, that what you have for us, Father. What you have for us, Father God. It's exactly what we need in this moment, Father. For no matter what we do, no matter where we are, Father God. All things, Father, are greater, are to your good, to our betterment, Father God. We thank you and we praise you this evening for all that you do and all that you've done, Father God. We praise you this evening, Father God, that through many different things, Father God, through experience, Father God, through, Father, different scenarios in our lives, Father, we have been able to experience the glory and the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Father that we get to experience that same power that raised him from the dead every day when we seek you, when we come before you and we speak out your word, and when your word comes to pass in our lives, through our lives, around us, Father, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that not only do you continue, Father, do you continually faithfully bring to pass what you have prof prophesied, Father God, but you also, Father God, bring to pass all those things that you have already promised in your word, Father. This evening we come before you and we lift up all those who are in a place of being downtrodden, and all those who are being pushed down, all those who are being, Father, looked over and walked over, Father. We lift them up to you, Father God. Father, that is what... The, the Pharisees were doing to Jesus. They were looking over him. They were trying to be, Father God, that more authority figure and trying to walk over him and tell him, Father God, exactly what they thought he was, Father God. Father, we lift those who have been, who have been pushed down, Father God. Those who have been pushed down in ministry, Father Those who have been pushed down because they're not the right gender, not the right age, not the right uh, earning bracket, Father God, whichever it is, Father. We thank you, Father, that you will lift them. You tell us, Father, that the humble will be exalted, Father God. And we lift them up to you for exaltation, Father God, in due time, Father. We thank you, Father God, for all that you do and all that you've done, Father God. We praise you, Father God, that you continue, Father God. Your grace and your mercy follow after us all the days of our life, Father God. And no matter where we are, Father, no matter what we're doing, Father God, we thank you that you are there beside us, guiding us, Father God. We pray that we will continually heed that still, small voice. We pray that you would guide us to continually heed that pull on our spirit, that draw on our spirit, Father God, that we know only comes from you, Father God that gentle pulling, that gentle drawing of your spirit, Father God, to take us down the correct path so that we may continually experience not only the revelation power, Father God, but we may continually experience our Lord Jesus at new levels and new, Father God, revelations in all things, Father. We thank you this evening for all that you do and all that you've done, Father God. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just, we thank you for everything that you have done for us, Father God. We lift up your mighty name, Father God. We know that your presence is with us wherever we go, Father God. We do not need to search for your presence because it is within us. It is around us. It is everywhere, everywhere that we think, everywhere that we go, Father God, you you stand in the gap for us, Father God, and we are so thankful, Father God, that you love us so much, Father God, that you have suffered so greatly for us through the crucifixion, Father God, and that your glory and majesty was revealed with your resurrection as the disciples ran to the tomb 
your angels sat there and said, who are you looking for? He is no longer here. He has risen exactly how he said he would. And we thank you, Father, because in your in your resurrection, Father God, comes our freedom, Father God. In your resurrection gives us the ability to be the, the house of your kingdom, to be the temple of your kingdom within us, Father God. And we thank you so dearly, Father God. And Father God, I just ask that you embolden each one of us as you emboldened the Apostle Paul, Father God, to suffer in your name, to be persecuted in your name, Father God. Because in the end, Father God, our stores, our riches are in heaven, Father God, not in this world, Father God. As you said, Father God, do not put our heart into things that will mold and rust and that the moths can eat, Father God. But keep our eyes on everything that is eternal, Father God, which is your kingdom, Father God. And Father God, we just ask you to continue to empower us in your spirit, Father God, to be the thermostats, Father God, that you have called us to be, as Pastor Catherine said, Father God. That wherever we go, Father God, that your presence is just running off us, Father God, and can be felt by all those around us, Father God. Let us continue to be and be brighter lights that you have called us to be wherever dark places you shall have us go, Father God. Father God, we we know, Father God, that you have put purpose and a plan in each one of us, Father God. And Father God, we know with those callings come crushings, Father God, and that we must sacrifice and we must lay down to achieve the purpose and plan that you have called, Father God. And Father God, I just ask that whoever is online with us, Father God, whoever watches this, Father God, that they will feel an overcoming of your presence, Father God, of your peace, of your love and your compassion, Father God. So they will know, Father God, that you are always with us, Father God, and that you are always walking side by side with us, Father God. And there is nothing that the enemy can do against us, Father God, that you have put the enemy under our feet by the glorious things that you have done through the death and resurrection, Father God. That there is no attack, there is no weapon that the enemy can form that will prosper against us, Father God. And that we must keep our eyes on you, Father God, and continue to move forward boldly, Father God, to the throne, Father God. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you for this platform, Father God. We thank you for our, <clears throat> our church and for Pastor Catherine, Father God. And we just ask you to cover them, Father God, and cover this word as it goes out, Father God. See that your word reaches every place that you desire to reach, Father God, that it impacts every heart that you desire to impact, Father God. We thank you, Father God. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Yes, Father, amen and amen. We praise you again this evening, Father God, for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Father God, for the ultimate sacrifice that you that you paid, Father God, for the ultimate sacrifice that your son paid for us, Father. And we praise you this evening as you continue to guide us, Father, in your glory, Father, in your grace, in your mercy, in your love, Father God. And we praise you this evening, Father God, that you continue to guide us in all things, Father. And we proclaim this evening as we continue about our week, Father God, and into this time, Father, with you, into every time we come to you, Father God, and every time we come into your presence, we shall feel, we shall hear, Father God, we shall taste and see the goodness of our Lord, as your word says, to taste and see how great you are, Father. We thank you this evening that you, Father God, are great. You are good, Father God, to us every day. And we, I pray this evening, Father God, that we would continually open our eyes to see the resurrection power in our lives every day, in every, even the small moments, Father God, in even those tiniest moments. Let us see your power at work, your love at work, your grace at work in all things, Father God. We thank you, Father, that your beauty, your love, your peace is everywhere, Father God. As long as we take the time to look for it, Father. We pray this evening, Father God, that you would give us, Father, your patience, your strength, Father God. Your spirit to continue to look for those small moments, Father. And we praise you, Father God. 
for the small moments that we see in and through our family, our children, Father, our grandchildren, Father God, and our workspaces and everywhere we go, Father. We thank you for those little glimpses, Father God, of paradise that you give us. And let us not be too busy to see them, Father God, when they come, Father. I thank you, Father God, for continuing to have grace, for continuing to have your righteousness upon not only your, your church, Father, Father, but every family that makes up your church, every family, every person that makes up the body, Father God. And I pray this evening that they continue in the blessing, that abundance of a blessing, Father God, that you have bestowed upon them, that they may be blessings to others, Father. And let us speak your word boldly, Father God. Let us speak your word as bold as the Lion of Judah, but as gentle as that Lamb of God, Father God. And Father, we pray this evening that you would cause us to be as crafty as a serpent, but as gentle as the dove, Father God, in all that we say in God. Let us discern that right moment, Father God, to speak your word in all things, Father. We praise you, we worship you, we thank you this evening, Father God. And in Jesus' mighty and powerful name, say amen and amen. Amen, amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. We thank you and we invite you to come on back next Monday night at 6.30 p.m., for another night of spiritual warfare, we invite you uh, to either put your prayer requests in the comments or go ahead and send them in with us so we can get in contact with you because we want to pray with and for you. And we love you even more so Jesus loves you. God bless everyone and have a wonderful rest of your Monday night.